Welcome back. On Wednesday, the New York Times published one of the most astonishingly prejudiced pieces I've ever read, a poisonous litany of racist smears against half the country, written by respected columnist Thomas Edsel. The entire thing is essentially one long bigoted and snobbish diatribe about how basically all Republican voters are driven by racist white resentment and grievance about being demographically displaced. Here's a snippet, quote, Trump's centrality guarantees that large numbers of resentful, truth-denying, conspiracy-minded, anti-democratic, overwhelmingly white voters will continue to find aid and comfort in the Republican Party. Absolutely incredible. This just shows you how vital it is for the left to try and entrench their narrative that the GOP is just a bunch of angry white people. The Democrats have to push this storyline because if you look at the actual data, the reality is completely the opposite. Black support for President Trump in 2016 was actually higher than either of his previous Republican candidates. And in 2020, some exit polls showed President Trump increased that margin by four points. And according to Democratic polls to David Shaw, roughly 10 percent of Hispanic voters switched from Clinton in 2016 to Trump in 2020. That is a huge demographic shift. With Trump, the GOP is becoming a new multiracial working class coalition, while Democrats are becoming the party of the rich, white and woke. Back with me now is J.D. Vance and Janelle King. J.D., I really thought of you when I read this piece because this is you know, you've, you've chronicled this kind of unbelievable prejudice directed against white working class people. What do you make of this latest salvo? Well, I think one of the things that the Democratic ruling class is so uncomfortable with is the fact that the Republican Party has become a more working and middle class party. They so want to think that they're the party of the middle class that when they're confronted with opposite data, the only thing that they can do is dismiss all of the working and middle class people who are voting for Republicans. So instead of taking their concerns seriously, they call them racist so they can ignore them. Exactly. And Janelle, the 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 the, the multiracial working class coalition, we've talked about that before. Look, I, when I use that phrase, people say, oh, well, that's not true. Look at, you know, overwhelming. Of course, it's still true that the majority of um, African Americans vote for Democrats, same with Latino voters, but it's moving in that direction. That's what's interesting here. Absolutely, it's moving in that direction. You know, and what I heard in between all the insults is that the Republican Party is just open to everyone, and that we're everyone that is willing to fight for our constitutional rights, our values. And, and, and this is a party of freedom. It's a party of the American dream. And it's a party of personal responsibility. And it's open to everyone. And that's what I heard. And so I think that we should just continue to keep moving forward. You're absolutely right. People are waking up from all of the hysteria and everything that's happening on the Democratic side. And they're realizing that they just want to have freedom and be able to take care of themselves and live a good life. What do you think, J.D., is happening at the kind of national level with the Republican Party? If, if this, this phenomenon is happen, happening in real life at the grassroots level in terms of real voters, do you think the, I guess, what we would call the establishment, the, the, the top of the party, understands this, appreciates it? What do you make of all of that? Well, I think they're starting to understand it. And one of the things that will necessarily have to happen is that the, as the Republican Party becomes a more working class party, it's going to have to do more to appeal and to continue to appeal to those working class voters. And the flip side of it is, of course, as the Democrats become more of an elite party, you're starting to see corporate America involve itself in the culture wars against Republicans. So one of the things the Republican leadership has to do is the flip side of Republicans becoming a working class party is the Democrats are becoming increasingly the party of big business. Business. And if that's true, Republican leaders have got to stop submitting to big business and start fighting back against them, especially on some of these culture war topics in Georgia and in, in, in North Dakota that big business seems to want to insert themselves into. Yeah, exactly right. That is such an important point. I mean, we're going to keep making that argument here. Um, it's a really big shift. Great to have you both uh, weigh in on it tonight. J.D. and Janelle, thank you so much.